Alright, hey everybody, welcome back once again. It's your girl Jasmine. So today, I want to do a lesson, um, basically talking about how favor is deceitful. Uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 31, uh, 30, how favor is deceitful, um, that beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. But what I want to really focus on this morning is how favor can be deceitful, um, and so, uh, you know, I want to look at a few scriptures. We're going to look at all the people who receive favor in the Bible. Just, you know, a few people who receive favor in the Bible that God actually uh, stuck out to me um, today. And I know that is a season, you know, I've been talking to a few people and a few people have been um, hearing about favor. And um, the other day I did a video on how I watched a lesson of T.U. Jakes and how, you know, he was talking about favor. Um, favor isn't fair. Which, in all reality, you know, that's why favor is deceitful and it's, you know, because it's not really fair um, because people can become really jealous, envious, and upset on what it is that God is trying to do in your life. Um, so, one thing that I want to say about favor is, you know, a lot of it is a outside, um, an outside approach. Thing. People are looking outside and they're viewing what they see outside rather than, you know, what it is um, that the person either has to go through or whether they're looking in at their heart. So the first scripture I want to actually start at is in 1 Samuel. Um, you know, uh, basically uh, Saul had been kicked out and Samuel had been sent to get a king for the kingdom um for the the people of Israel and so uh basically when he was going to pick a king um you know basically they were trying to choose um David's brother um because of how he was looking on the outside but they didn't see what was on the inside and so um it says um I'm going to start in verse chat well verse 1 now the lord said to samuel how long will you mourn for saul seeing that i have rejected him from reigning over israel fill your horn with oil and go and i am sending you to jesse the bethlehemite for i have provided myself a king among his sons and samuel said how can i go if saul hears of it he will kill me and the lord said take a heifer with you and say i have come to sacrifice to the lord then invite jesse to sacrifice and i will show you what you shall do and you shall anoint me the one i named to you uh and samuel did and the lord said uh and went to bethlehem bethlehem and the elder of the town trembled at his coming and said, Do you come peaceably? And he said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourself and come with me to the sacrifice. And then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. And it was when he came that he looked at Elab and said, Surely the Lord anointed is before him. So he looked upon him just by looking you know uh the bible talks about you know how uh eve you know looked at the tree and she thought it was good and she was deceived at you know the you know the deceived from what it was that she was looking upon so you know faith is not by uh sight faith is by you know believing in what you do not see and see here he you know he was going by what he saw surely the anointed is before him it's not you know so that's why a lot of people think favor you know favor is very deceitful because a lot of people go on you know oh they're deceived on what they see um they they're deceived on what they see it says but the lord said to samuel do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature because i have refused him for the Lord does not see as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So basically, uh, he was looking more at the outward appearance of what he had, um, you know, and, you know, what or what he looked like but it was you know a lot of people in society that's what we do um we tend to think that people are more blessed have more have more favor just because of what they have you know just because of their job just because of their education status just because of you know how much money they make you know 
you know, all we all look on the outward appearance of what they have instead of, you know, uh, you know, what it is, you know, that's within them. Because right here, God said, you know, the Lord said, do not look at his outward appearance or look at his physical stature because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance and the Lord looks at the heart. I'm going to turn to another um, story in the Bible. We all know the story of the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler had everything that the world had to offer him, everything. God told him, God told him, take up your cross, pick up your cross and follow me. Um, and, you know, and give yourself to the poor and, you know, come have eternal life. You know, he said, what can I do to inherit eternal life? He said, you know, get rid of yourself, sell to your poor and come follow me, take up your cross and follow me. And the rich young ruler said, you know, he walked away sad. Why did he walk away sad? Um, because he didn't want to give up what he had. Um, favor is deceitful because at the end of the day, in all reality, the rich young ruler went to hell. And, you know, Jesus, who, you know, had everything, you know, even though it looked like he had nothing, you know, was his way to heaven. So if you looked in the rich and ruler's life and was like, oh my gosh, he has everything the world has to offer. You know, he has everything the world has to offer. He has everything great, everything big, everything wonderful. He has all this stuff. And because of it, you know, he is awesome and he has all this favor and he is wonderful. But in all reality, he was on his way to hell. So he didn't really have favor because he was on his way to hell. See, man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart because if you really understand that he walked away with his heart not right with Christ. He walked away with his heart not right with Jesus. He walked away with everything not settled with Christ because he chose the world instead of God. And so favor in the world can be very deceitful, um, you know, very deceitful. So I'm going to put up the first few questions and then we're going to carry on there, you guys. Peace. Have you been looking at what people have outwardly and wanting what they have because it looks good? Do you know if their heart is right with God? Just because someone looks like they have everything doesn't mean they will go to heaven. All right, you guys. Um, so the Bible says in First John four one, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. So there's many people who have gone out to the world and they're not um, preaching the right gospel. They're not teaching the things of God. They are deceitful. They have deceived you. They are imposters. Uh, for, uh, 2 Timothy 3.13 says, while evil people and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Uh, you know, they are deceiving other people. They, you know, they're not here. They're not preaching uh, the true gospel. There's a lot of people in this world, um, you know, who are on TV, who are, you know, TV preachers who will sit there and be like, oh, your miracle's coming right around the corner. And then days later, your miracle has not came right around the corner. You still have to wait for it. You still have to wait on God. There's little, go out and get your blessing right now. No, wait on God. Be in obedience, you know, uh, what it is that God is trying to have you do. Wait on the Lord. Trust in God. You know, you should be in your Bible. You should be reading. You should be fasting. You know, it's not about me and what, you know, I'm doing. You know, it's not about you and what you're doing. It's about what God will want you to do in your life. Do not be deceived. It's all, you know, test every spirit in which comes to you because not every spirit that comes to you is from the Lord and many of people are being deceived from these things um and you know saying oh well yeah I you know I'm blessed of God because I have all these things well just because you have things doesn't mean that you know you have favor with God um and it's you know it's not always that you'll have you know that you do have favor from God just because you have all the things I'm actually going to um turn to Esther and um, read in uh, chapter 2, verse 17. It says, um, The king 
So basically what's happening is Esther, um, you know, the king threw out Esther. I mean, the king threw out Queen Vashti, and he was looking for a new queen. And so Esther uh, finds favor out of all the people in the king's eyes. So it says in verse 17, the king loved Esther more than all the other women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the other virgins. So <clears throat> he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. And then the king had a great feast, and the feast of Esther for all his officials and servants and he proclaimed a holiday in the province and gave gifts according to the generosity of the king um, when the virgins were gathered together a second time Mordecai sat within the king's state now Esther had not revealed her family and her people just as Mordecai had charged her for Esther obeyed the commands of Mordecai as when she was brought up by him now you're saying okay well you know you're saying to me jasmine favor is deceitful look at this girl you know she became queen and all this stuff uh esther came queen because the king was looking for a queen uh you know esther you know had her family she had everything in her life esther became queen because uh, the king was looking for a queen. Uh, he was choosing the queens. And, you know, she probably had her own plans for her life, what it is that she wanted to do for her life, you know. And here she is. She became queen, but she became queen because the king was looking for a queen. So favor is deceitful. She found favor in in his sight um, because of, you know, of life circumstances. There was a purpose in why and behind she, behind of why she found favor in the king's sight. Because, as we see, when we look down, it says, when the virgins gathered together a second time, Mordecai sat within the kingdom, king, king's gate. Now Esther had not revealed her family and her people, just as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther obeyed the commands of Mordecai as when she was brought up by him. See, she had a purpose of why she had obtained favor, because God had a purpose for her for where she was in that time. When you turn to Esther uh, chapter 4, in verse 13, it says, And Mordecai, basically, uh, Haman was trying to get the Jews killed, and so um, Esther had been elevated with favor uh, to the top, just because God had a purpose for her, because God didn't want his people to be killed. Uh, there was a purpose behind her favor, you know, oh, wow, she's queen, you know, imagine, she probably had her own plans for her life, things she wanted to do for her life, but she submitted to God's will for her life, and she did what God wanted her to do, because, um, you know, you know, God's people were in trouble, there was something that God needed her to do for her life, you know, and a lot of people, oh, well, you know, she got to be queen, you know, it's really hard to sometimes submit to what it is, um, you know, for your, you know, that God may have for your life, you know, even though, um, you know, she became queen, you know, when, you know, she could have had, you know, what if she was in love with somebody? What if, you know, they wanted a family together, but instead she humbled herself down and she became queen, uh, to save her people, you know, and, uh, chapter four, verse 13, it says, and Mordecai told them, to answer Esther, do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace any more than all the other Jews. So basically, they were going to be killed. And if Esther didn't do anything, her people would be killed, and she would also be killed too. Because she, where there was no escape, all the Jews would be killed, even her, if they found out she was a Jew. So Mordecai had to come to her and say, you know, and then it says, for if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to this, the come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day, my maids and I will fast likewise, and so I will go to the king, which is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way, and he did according to all Esther's commands, commanded him. 
Now it happened on the third day that Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner courts, and the king's palace across the kingdom, while the king sat in the royal throne of the royal house facing the entrance. So it was when Esther saw when the king saw Queen Esther that she received favor in his sight, and she held out. Uh, he the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hands. He she found favor in his sight yet again um after fasting and praying and and interest in you know people interceding so that the, her people would not be killed see god was trying to save his people was trying to save his people so she received favor so many times because god was trying to save his people there was a purpose behind her favor and what she received and a lot of people will look in and be like oh look at her life you know i bet you there were plenty of times when she cried about you know being clean you know probably you know cried about you know what else could i have been doing with my life you know this is the life in which you know was chosen uh you know for me you know the king had chose this life for her the king had chose this life for her. But, you know, people looked at, oh, my gosh, you have this big old palace, you know, but just because people have something does not always mean they're happy, you know. just You know, we never know what people have to go through or sacrifice in the process of getting what it is that they get, you know. That's why, you know, the Bible talks about, you know, it's you sh we shouldn't be coveting what other people have, you know. Um it's not okay to cover people, you know, talk, the Bible talks about how, um, you know, in Hebrews 13, 5, it says, keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you for no forsake you. See, you know, we are to be content in what we have because at the end of the day, you know, if we are, you know, not just the love of money, but the love of everything that other people have. If you're sitting here coveting other people and what other people have just by the outlook of it, it doesn't matter because, like I said earlier, God looks at, you know, people look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart because, you know, at the end of the day, you never know what people are going through. They could be crying. They could be empty. They could be on their way to hell. It does not matter what it looks like on the outside. Oh, she got to be clean, Jasmine. Oh, well, it does not matter because she could still be, you know, missing her family. Family, you know, the stuff that she had to sacrifice and go through in the process of what it was of her obtaining the favor in which she had obtained, it did not matter. Favor can be deceitful because just because, you know, what looks on the, you know, good on the outside doesn't mean that it's good on the inside. Eve was deceived. Eve was deceived, you know, uh, when, when she bit into the fruit. What sacrifice have you had to make in order to receive your favor from God? All right. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, Hebrews 13, 5 says, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be contented with such things as you have. For he himself has says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So, we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man do to me uh so basically we are not to you know covet other people and what they do have in life because you never know what it is that they have to go through in the process of getting what it is that they are receiving from god you know or receiving from the world you know uh you know just because like the bible said test every spirit because every spirit is from god so there's people who are like oh yeah i have all these things it's from god when on all reality they may not even know the god or you know that they're talking about they may not know god they not know may not know christ they you know it may not be you know because the bible talks about how you know uh, at the end of times, you know, many people will say, Lord, Lord, but God will say, you know, flee from me, evil doer, you worker of iniquity. I never knew, knew you, you know, they never knew Christ. They never knew Jesus, you know, and so, you know, you have to make sure that, you know, we are not envious and covet, you know, coveting what other people have, because just because what other people have, you know, look so successful and looks like, you know, they have all these things, you know, 
it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, if they don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, they're not entering into the kingdom of heaven. You know, if they're not preaching you the right doctrine, and if they don't have the right doctrine in which it is that they need within themselves, they haven't received Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, they're not going to heaven. Just because it looks good, something looks good on the outside, does not mean it's good on the inside. You know, it's, taking, it's like taking a bite of food of something that looks so good, and then in all reality, it doesn't taste good at all because, you know, it's not really good um you know you can't make you know the bible talks about how you know um you know good fruit can't you know produce bad fruit bad fruit can't produce you know good fruit you know bad fruit cannot produce good fruit uh, you know good fruit fruit cannot produce bad fruit you know so you have to make sure that you are uh you know testing all the spirits testing the people who who which are feeding the gospel, you know, uh, you are not getting bad gospel, bad doctrine from whoever it is that you're getting from, because, you know, like, at the end of the day, like, you know, like I said, you know, even, uh, you know, what I've had to learn is that, um, for myself is that I really have to be in my Bible every day, and I really have to focus on what God is trying to tell me, because if not, I will be deceived, like, if I'm not so you know, in my Bible, like, there can be people who come up in my life who will sit there, you know, there's people, oh, I'm going to prophesy into your life, I'm going to tell you and speak to you in your life, I've had, you know, people try to actually literally, oh, speak to me in my life, and I've made a fool of myself, because, you know, I, it wasn't God really speaking to them, and then, you know, oh, I think, you know, God's telling me that, and I'm like, Okay, and so I go, and it wasn't really God telling them. So I was being deceived of what it was that they were telling me that I should be doing. And so I have really had to, you know, put myself in my Bible, put myself in the Word, you know, because if God hasn't told me first, then I don't want to hear what it is that you're trying to tell me, because unless it's confirmation in what, in what it is that God's trying to tell me, I don't want to hear it, because I don't want to, fe I don't want to go in circles trying to figure out what it is that I'm trying to be doing. If God didn't tell me that this is what's happening in my life in the first place, you know, I don't want to hear it. You know, I don't want, you know, you can keep your money, you can keep your cars, you can keep your clothes, you can keep all that stuff. If it's not from God, if God didn't send it, you know, towards me, then I don't want it. Um, I remember when I was in California, God had told me to take up my cross, leave school, pick up all my stuff, follow Jesus. I was like the rich young ruler. I sold all my stuff, but the rich young ruler didn't, you know, get rid of stuff. I sold all my stuff. I gave to the poor. I was like, I'm not making the decision that the rich young ruler made. I left. I got all the way to California, and someone, you know, I said, I know I'm, I'm on the phone with my grandma. I said, I know, I know I'm supposed to be here. I know I'm supposed to be in California. I know I'm supposed to be here. God told me I need to be here. And so, you know, she's like, well, you know, I have a place for you to stay somewhere else. And so she had her friend, you know, call me on the phone. And uh, I was like, well, I'm not going there unless, you know, God tells me that I need to be there. And then all of a sudden, the woman gave me a scripture saying um, that the disciples went out in twos. And the scripture that God had given me at that time were two are better than one um, in Ecclesiastes 4, 9, 12. And I knew that was God. And she didn't know that at the time, but I knew that it was God. So that was the only reason I would move, because I wasn't going to move if I did not know that it was from God, because I didn't want to be in the wrong place where God did not want me to be. So you have to make sure that you're testing what it is that God has for you, you know, and make sure that you're content in what it is that God has for you. Because honestly, like, you know, what I, you know, have realized my whole life is like, you know, like a lot of, for me, I was not content in what it was that God had for me. Um, and I was not content, like, in my life, you know, why do I have to live, you know, with my grandmother, why aren't my parents like this, you know, why, you know, is my life like this, you know, and I wasn't content on what I have right in front of me, and when we live with discontentment of what what's in front of we go searching for what other people have, you know, and we think we'll just be happy with what, 
you know, it is that they have. But if we're not happy with what we have right in front of us, we will never be happy at all uh, because we will never find joy. You know, we live in a society where people want more and more and more and more and more. And they think the more that you get, the more happy you will be, but you are being deceived because, you know, all you're doing is you are constantly taking stuff in, taking stuff in, and you're still empty because, you know, if you don't have Jesus Christ, you're still empty. There are still people in this world, you know, I know that I did it, you know, I, for a long time, like, I love watching the YouTube videos of people who dress up all the time, and all I did was, like, buy more clothes, buy more clothes, oh my gosh, I'm gonna dress like them, you know, all this other stuff, but at the end of the day, like, at the end of the day, when Jesus said, take up your cross, follow me, he said, sell your stuff, give to the poor. You don't need that stuff, okay? You know, you don't. You, what do you? You don't need it. I don't. I don't need you to have it. You know. Um. And I was. I was playing a part that I thought. You know that the world wanted me to play. You know. I knew the word of God. I, I knew those things. You know. I was in the church. Um. You know. I had. You know. The scriptures. And. You know. I. I. You know. I was walking with God, but I wasn't taking up my cross, I wasn't following Jesus, I wasn't in my purpose, and, um, you know, I, you know, I was just, you know, it was very deceiving, because this, that wasn't what God had for me in my life, you know, and, and I, now I am, you know, walking in the purpose of which God has me to do, you never know what people have to go through in the process of what it is that God, you know, has them go through to get to where it is that they need to go through. Um, one person I'm, we're going to be looking in Luke chapter 1 with Mary. Now, the Bible says that Mary, um, in Luke 1, if I could turn to it, Mary received favor from God. Um, so, we're going to look in Luke 1. Um, it says in verse 26 of Luke 1, um, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth. Nazareth, um, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, and the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, and the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she w saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of his greeting this was the angel said to her do not be afraid mary for you have found favor with god and behold uh you will conceive in your womb uh, and bring forth a son and you shall name him jesus and he will be great and will be called the son of the most high and the lord god will give him the throne of his father david and he will reign over the house of jacob forever in the kingdom there will be uh no end um, and so basically, uh, you know, we all know that, you know, the Bible says that, you know, uh, Mary was favored, but we don't know what Mary had to go through in the process. Yeah, it looked wonderful from the outside. Yes, we're not saying that Jesus Christ is not a blessing, but you never know what somebody has to go through in the process of the favor when she found. She found favor, and here she is. You know, it's it's easy to look on the outside. Yes, she has Jesus Christ, but imagine her sitting there watching her son have to die on the cross for the sins of people who don't even care about him. Here she is. You know, if you've ever lost a child, you know, I remember uh, when I was younger and um, I miscarried, I didn't even get to see my child. And just the pain from that was overwhelming to me. But to birth a child, to nurture a child, to watch your child grow up, to watch your child help all these people, and then watch them slowly beat your child and, and nail him to a cross and kill him and whip him and do all the things in which they did. Yes, you know, it was it, on, you know, you never know what people have to go through in the process of the favor in which they receive. You know, um, yes. It was a blessing in which she had Christ. I'm not saying that Christ was not a blessing, but just because someone receives favor does not mean that they don't have to go through something in the process. So I'm going to put up the next few questions, and then we're going to carry on there, you guys. Peace. 
Will you stop looking at what others have and enjoy what God has given you or remain in discontent? All right, you guys. So um, next we're going to be looking in um, the book of Ruth. And uh, we were talking about how, you know, people have to go through some things in the process of the favor in which they receive. Now, um, we're going to be looking in Ruth chapter 2, um, verse 10. And it says, so, uh, this is Ruth, basically, uh, because Boaz had um, noticed her in the field and um, that she was gleaning from. And it says, so she fell on her face and she bowed down to the ground and said to him, why? Have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? And Boaz answered and said to her, It has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother in law since death of your husband, and how you have left your father and your mother and the land of your birth and have come and the people whom you did not know before. The Lord repay your work, and a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel, under whose wing you have come for refuge. Now here's this woman, and we see uh, she received favor when she got to this new land, in which it was that she gave up everything to get. We don't understand the sacrifices in which, you know, obtaining favor, you know, people always look on the outside. Some people have to give up a lot to receive the favor in which they have, you know, and people don't, that's why you're not supposed to covet what other people have, because if you're not willing to go through what other people are going through to get to where they are, then don't sit there and want what they want, because they have to make these sacrifices in order to get what it is. I bet there are people in that land who gleaned every day and were like, how is she from another town? How is she a Moabitess? You know, here she is worshiping false gods, false idols, all this other stuff. And she comes to this town and all of a sudden she receives favor and Boaz is doing all this stuff for her. How dare she? How dare she? She thinks she has it like this, you know, uh, you know, but no. The Bible says right here, and Boaz answered and said to her, it has been fully reported to me. That you have done your mother, what you have done to your, for your mother-in-law, she, you know, she was giving up everything for her mother-in-law, and she left, she, you know, she was left, you know, she left, how, you know, she left her father, and her mother, and her land of birth, and her, and her, you know, her, her husband had died, and she gave up her gods to serve the gods of Naomi, you know, you know, the god of Naomi, you know, you know, the Lord, to serve the Lord, she gave up everything to serve the Lord, you know, she made those sacrifices, you know, to obtain the favor in which she got, and because she made those sacrifices, she received the favor, and a lot of people, you know, how can you get mad because she gave up all this stuff, people never look at what you have to give up, you know, I look at my life, and um, sometimes it's hard because you know, God has me speak to a lot of people, and um, it's gotten to a point where, you know, sometimes when I speak to people, like, God reveals to me how they're actually feeling, and when it's towards me, it can be very hurtful, and, you know, like, sometimes, like, it's hard because you don't want to make people upset, but no one understands all the stuff, you know, I had to sacrifice in order to get what it is that God wants to give me. Yeah, you may look at the favor in which it is that God wants to give me the stuff, but do you understand all the stuff I had to sacrifice in the process of obtaining what it is that God uh, wants to give me? You know, uh, God told me, pick up your cross, follow Christ leave school, you know, the whole world was like, oh, you're, you're, you know, you're missing out on $30,000 worth of education, you know, uh, you know, you know, $30,000 you can make a year on helping all the people, you'll have your degree, you'll look all this in the world, to come home and, you know, to fly across the country, you know, uh, to sit here and run my web show, um, this summer, I was babysitting a girl, and everybody was making fun of me because, 
you know, I went from this $30,000 degree to babysitting this little girl for $70 a week. And it was getting made fun of in the process of it. You know, people left and right turning their back on me, not wanting to talk to me, telling me that I was hearing from Satan, you know, that God wasn't really telling me what he was telling me. You know, when, you know, God was preparing me for it was what he wants to give me in my life, you know, it it, it can be hard, you know, um, I, you know, I'm going to talk about Joseph and how he Are you received favor, you know, what God, God has given you know, you gave me life. the vision, he told me you to write it plain, he told me what he wanted to do in my life, you know, favor can be like I said, you know, I know why, that God wants no, to give me a family, why. how he wants, you know, me to have a family and how, you know, you know, when I was younger, I prayed to God and I asked God, you know, can, uh, you know, I don't want to be a single mom, you know, and for me, this is a dream come true to actually have, you know, a family and to have somebody, you know, and, and to, you know, have finally have a place to call home instead of, you know, something that's, you know, just so temporary because I've always had something so temporary, like in the wilderness when they dwelt in tents, you know, imagine how wonderful it felt to finally have a place to call their own, a place of promise to call their own, you know, and you know, a lot of people would sit there and, you know, just be like, oh my gosh, you know, she doesn't, you know, she shouldn't have what it is that she had, but nobody understands the sacrifices and what it is that you have to make, you know, to obtain sometimes the favor in which it is. A lot of people just look, you know, they'll probably look into my life and be like, well, Jazz, you know, um, you know, you don't deserve this, you know, what did you really give up? You know, they don't, they don't look at that, you know, uh, they only look at, <laughs> you know, they'll probably just look at, you know, what I have now, at, you know, and what, you know, what, I mean, not now, right in a sense, but what I have at that point in that time in that moment, you know, she doesn't deserve that, you know, do you understand what I had to sacrifice in the process of getting what I got, you know, um, you know, we look at Ruth, you know, and, um, we're going to, you know, look at, uh, Genesis 37. Um, this, you know, I, you know, I, I love it because, you know, God, you know, ministers to me in the process of, um, allowing me to minister to you guys, and, um, it's a blessing to me. Genesis 37, it talks about Joseph. We all know the story of Joseph, um, and, um, Joseph was loved by Israel, but, more than all his other brothers, and um, in verse 5 of chapter 37 of Genesis, it says, now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, please hear the dream which I have dreamed. Uh, there we were binding sheaves in the field, and then behold, my sheaves arose, and also stood upright, and indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brother said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. They hated him for his dreams. They hated him for uh, the vision in which God gave him for his life. Um, and it can be hard be because God has a vision for your life. And people can hate you because of the vision he has for your life without even seeing it come to pass yet and they will do anything to try to destroy you anything to try to take you out so that god's vision for your life does not come to pass uh joseph's brother sold him into slavery you know they sold him into slavery they did not want it to come back to pass at all they were going to do anything and everything possible for it not to come to pass um, I remember on my journey, um, I had negative 27 cents in my account, um, and I was staying at, uh, this woman's house, and, uh, she said to me, I was gonna, you know, have you just stay here, I was just gonna keep you here, and I, she said, did you ask your grandmother for money, and I said, no, I didn't ask her for any money, I didn't ask her for any money, I said, I said, I prayed, and I woke up with $2,500 in my account, uh, and I called, you know, 
my grandfather and he asked me, you know, how are you getting around? And I said, because it's God. This is not me. This is God. You know, what do you want me to do? This is above me. You know, everybody's sitting here walking around like it was just me. That I'm the one who was pretending, you know, I'm not pretending. This is God. This is what God wants for my life. You know, don't, you know, people thought, oh, it's just crazy Jasmine, you know, she was out there in the world running away, you know, she's doing the same thing she used to do, running away from everything, not doing, you know, she's not, not, she's not hearing from God, there's no way, there's no way, God gave me $2,500 because he wanted me to do something, he wanted me to go somewhere, he wanted me to be somewhere, he was going to supply the need because he needed me to be somewhere, you know, here is Joseph. God wanted him to be somewhere someday. He had a purpose and plan for his life. So nothing could stop God's plan for his life because God was determined because it was God who wanted that for his life. They sold him into slavery, but it did not stop him from getting to where it was that God wanted him to be. It doesn't matter how much you try to stop someone from, you know, their destination of where God needs them to be. If God wants them to be somewhere, they're going to be somewhere. It does not matter. I had zero dollars in my account. Negative 27 cents. My grandma wasn't giving me no money. People wanted me to stay someplace and keep me someplace because they thought I was acting crazy that I was taking things a little bit too far. My whole family thought I was taking things a little bit too far. When it was beyond me, it was God. It was beyond myself. I was just willing and humble enough to do what it was that God wanted me to do. Because that's what God wanted me to do. It's hard sometimes. People always look at, oh, look at what, you know, God is doing in her life. Do you understand the sacrifice I had to make? It's hard wanting acceptance for your family and you're not getting the acceptance because this is what God's doing in your life. Rejection. I know rejection more than anybody, anybody in my whole life has been nothing but rejection and it keeps coming. I finally thought I would be accepted because I was in school, but then instead I decided to follow Jesus because there ain't nobody great. What am I going to do without Christ? There is no one in this world greater than Christ. Joseph, I bet he learned that. Because he was searching for acceptance in his brothers and sisters, and for his for his brothers, and they sold him off to slavery. And he was in slavery, and then he went to jail, and then finally, not until he rose up to where it was that God had him, you know, was he able, you know, to understand, you know, were they able to understand, you know, they didn't understand until. God raised up Joseph, you know, we see in the end, you know, he was just like, you know, you know, you guys meant it for, for my bad, but God meant it for my good. God meant this for the good because he ended up saving all of Egypt, all of the land around him. He saved, He everybody around them were saved because of what Joseph had done, the sacrifices that, you know, he he made he held on to what the vision of what it was that God had promised him you know held on to you know you know I bet it was hard some days for Joseph because here he is and this woman is trying to you know take advantage of him and he's holding on to what it was that God had promised him and we see you know then he's in the jail and they forget about him you know, but he was holding on to what it was that God had for him. He was going through all these things all this time, but he was holding on to what it was that God had for him for his life because God gave him a dream, a dream, a vision, you know, and the, and the Bible says, you know, God is not one who shall lie. He's not going to lie. And so Joseph was holding on to all that, all that time, holding on to, you know, God's promises, you know, even, you know, we look at jo Joshua and Caleb when they were in the wilderness, you know, they were holding on to God's promises. They were holding on to what it was that God had for them. You know, 
it, you know, there are probably people who were in the wilderness who were dying off, who were mad and jealous because it looked like they had favor, but they did not have. It wasn't that they, they're, it was, you know, they were better than them. They weren't better than them. They just believed in what God was trying to do. You know, and just because, you know, someone believes in what it is that God's trying to do does not mean they're better than someone else. It's just they believe. Joseph believed in what it was that God was trying to do. When you look at in the Bible a few, uh, you know, a few verses before, verse 5 and 37, uh, verse 2, it says, uh, this is the history of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flocks with his brothers. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of uh, Zif Zilpha, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report with them to his father. They were having a hard time doing their own work right there that Joseph had to report them. You know, some people are so having a hard time doing what it is that God has called them to do in their life, that when, you know, other people obtain favor in their own life, then they're mad at another person. If you do what it is that God has called you to do in your life, and you're obedient, and you're believing in what it is that God is doing in your life, you have no reason to be mad at wh what somebody else is getting in their life, and what God has for their life. If you're happy, and you're content in what it is that God has for your life. Uh, you know, there are certain people who ask, you know, you ask God for something he gives it to you but then you want what somebody else has that does not make any sense enjoy what it is that you ask god for you ask him for it so so enjoy what it is that god gave you you know i, I can be guilty as charged you know some days you know I, I i can get upset and be like lord you know th this is what you gave i asked for this you know if I am not content and happy in what it is that God has me and start looking at other people, I'll start coveting what other people have. I don't want to covet what other people have. This is what I wanted for my life. You know, if, you know, it can be deceitful. Don't covet what other people have. If God's going to give you something in your life, enjoy what it is. You know, I hear people in and out day by day. We're constantly asking God for more and more because we're not content in what it is that God has for us. We're not content in what, you know, it is that God has placed in our face. Enjoy what it is that God has for you right now, you know. You know, we are always constantly, you know, I was thinking about this last night when I was in the car. You know, our whole lives. We are constantly like, I can't wait until this next place in our life. We can't even enjoy where we are at the moment in our life because we're so worried about the next place in our life. We're always discontent in everything it is that we have in our life and everything, every place we are in our life. We can't even go through storms or enjoy the storms in our life because we're so discontent because we're wait, we're so we so we can't wait until the storms over in our life. We can't wait until the good times are over in our life. You know, when it's summer, we want it to be winter. When it's winter, we want it to be summer. We are not content at all in life we need to start being content when it's raining we want it to be sunny when it's sunny we don't want it to be rainy we're not content you know we need to learn how to be content in our lives you know favor is not fair is deceitful when people look you know don't ever want what other people have because just because they have certain things you don't know if they're on their way to hell you don't know what they had to give up in the process. You don't know. Ruth had lost everything. You know, I know what it's like to lose everything. You know, I, I used to call myself destruction. Destruction. Because I felt like everybody I touched would leave me to a point where I don't even like hugging people. And God wants to give me a family. For me, you know how overwhelming that is? You know? That's overwhelming because I'm so afraid to lose what God's giving me. That's overwhelming. You never know what people have to go through and sacrifice in the process of what it is that God is giving you or God is giving someone. So why, you know, favor can be deceitful. Don't hate on what somebody else because you never know what people have to sacrifice. I have literally miscarried, you know. I've literally lost my family. You know, a lot of my family doesn't even like me. You know, I've been locked up. I've been the prostitute. Every man that I've ever been with, all they've done is used me up. It can be deceitful. It can be very deceitful. Yes, I have obtained these things. I will obtain these things in which God has for me. But I've had to go through things in the process to get what it is that God is going to give me. Don't be jealous of what it is. 
that I have because you don't know what I've had to go through to get what it is that God has for me, you know? I I'm, I I look at people all the time and I tell them some of the stuff I've had to go through in life and, you know, they look at my life, you know, like, I'm perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I never will claim to be perfect. I'm just following God and what he wants for my life so that I can obtain something that I've never had before. You know? And, um, you know, that's why I understand this, this lesson so well because it can't be very deceitful and people start coveting what other people don't be covet. Don't covet what other people have because you don't know what they had to go through in the process. You know? Before, when I first started this whole journey... I told God, I said, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be really around people. I said, I just want to help people travel the country and never have to be in the same place ever again. I never could imagine myself actually wanting to stay in one area at one time and, you know, having family. I couldn't because I have a hard time with people. Yeah, I can, I can do the web show all day. I can do it because I don't have to be in somebody's face all day. I don't have to... Worry about, you know, if other people are judging me. I've had so many people talk so much bad stuff about me because of, you know, where I was in life. That it's hard to deal with people. And knowing that a lot of the people I have to deal with are half the people who are talking bad about me when I was out in the world. You never know what people have to go through in the process of obtaining the favor in which they have. So, I thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm going to put the last few questions. Are right, you guys until we meet again. God bless. Peace.